We are back on the record. We left. Uh, Mr. Schaefer, you ready to do your uh, recross of the plaintiff, Mr. Hageman? You're still under oath. Yes, sir. Okay, go ahead, Mr. Schaefer. Hageman, uh, you indicated that you had gone through some uh, co parenting counseling, and I take it that what you told us that you had a two and a half hour session with Patricia, and that was it, or was it an ongoing counseling session? Uh, no, I did not say we had co-parenting counseling. Um, I had said that we met with Gianna's counselor, Miss Patricia, specifically to try to work out a plan so Gianna could go on a family vacation with us. Okay, so you have not participated in any co-parenting co uh, counseling? No, there's been no co-parenting counseling. Okay, all right. Uh, in relation to your statement that when you were in Disney, that... Gianna had a 20 minute, a half hour plus conversation with her mother. Are you certain of that time? No, I sir. Suggest you like, what's that? No, sir. I'm not How long sure. do you remember that being? I would say it was around 20 minutes, 20 minutes to a half hour. Uh, if it was uh, 30 seconds or a minute, that that's uh, not consistent with your recollection? It was not 30 seconds or a minute. Okay. And uh, you had indicated, well, uh, Leanne didn't respond. Were you monitoring the phone? What were you doing? No, I was not monitoring the phone. Um, Gianna used my phone to send messages to her mom. And Gianna, I mean, I can't testify to what Gianna said, but Gianna said she didn't hear back from her mom. Well, okay, don't tell us what she said. My, my question is, did you monitor the phone? No, sir, I did not. Do, do you monitor... Uh, Gianna's journal or any of her papers at home? Gianna doesn't have a journal. She has um, her cell phone. There have been a few times that I have looked at Gianna's phone. Um, and in those times, there have been questionable messages from her mom, from Gianna's mom, Leanne, to Gianna. So you, you do uh, monitor her phone at your home on a regular basis? No, sir, I do not. I believe this has happened three times over the course of the last few years. And like I said, each time that I've questioned something and looked into it, I've found uh, questionable responses from Leanne to Gianna. Okay, so so what are you doing that for? To to uh, check up on Leanne or what? What's the, what's the intent? Uh, trying to protect my daughter, making sure uh, that you know, the conversations that John is having are, are truthful and sure that she has all the information that she needs or to make sure that she's not being alienated or she's not being manipulated in any way or coached in any way that John's decisions and, can and be to gain decisions alone. And, and to monitor what she's saying to her mother and what her mother is saying to her. No, is that what I'm understanding? No, John is free to talk to her mom and free to say whatever she wants to her mom. I've never restricted that in any way and I will not restrict that in any way. That wasn't my question. My question is that you are checking up on her after the conversation takes place, right? No, I'm checking up. I have, like I said, I've looked at Gianna's phone a couple times uh, because there have been incidents where Gianna and I have been having a conversation and the information that she's telling me is not the information that is truthful. So, yes, I did look at Gianna's okay. phone so a couple was times. Was Gianna truthful when she said that there were disparity marks, remarks made to her in your household about her mother? I don't believe that Gianna was being truthful in that. Uh, I know there's been an incident where Gianna steadfastly believed that her mom was telling the truth. And both April and myself, and I have text messages to prove it, saying that, you know, no, Gianna, your mom in this instance was not telling the truth. So you so, called her a liar to, you called Leanne, a liar in front of your daughter. Is that correct? Uh, I believe it said that Leanne is not telling the truth. Well, hasn't Gianna come to you uh, in relation to some disputes that she's had with your wife and asked for your support? Has she ever come to you in that regard? Uh, I don't understand what you're asking, sir. I'm suggesting to you that Gianna has come to you on a number of occasions and I'm paraphrasing, and she says, hey, Dad, I'm having difficulty with April. Will you support me on this? Can we take care of this problem? She, first of all, has Gianna come to you on occasions with that sort of a question? 
No, she has not. Tell me about the uh, situation you just told us about that you told the child that Leanne was not telling the truth. Uh, who all was there? Uh, it was April, myself, and Gianna. I believe it was in reference to a Yogi Bear trip. Um, and the fact that Leanne had wanted and requested an extra day, uh, actually after they had already left and were at the place. So it was really kind of putting me in a position, either I agreed to this extra day or I'm the bad guy. And that's a lot of situations that I got put in. Um, and in reference to that, it was relayed to, to Gianna that that wasn't the case and that the information that I was being supplied with, you know, Leanne was not telling the truth to Gianna. So you, so you told Gianna that her mother was not telling the truth. Correct. Correct. Okay. Uh, you heard Gianna testify that she felt stress about the system that you have in your home. Did you hear that testimony? Yes, I heard Gianna's testimony. Okay. And uh, was she telling the truth? Or did you believe that she's uh, receiving a lot of stress because of this system? Uh, I don't believe she's receiving as much stress um, for the system as she's saying. I think there is some stress. Um, but I think, I mean, if I could say how I think where the stress is coming from, I think that there's a lot of stress coming from her mom and who don't, who does not understand the system and is trying to put Gianna in the middle of this. Okay. So you're blaming mom on this now. So what are you blaming mom doing? Oh, I'm not blaming mom. Oh, I thought you said that, uh, her mother is putting a lot of stress on her in this situation. Yes, I feel that a lot of the stress, from, you were asking about the stress from the chore chart in the system in my home. I don't believe Gianna has a correct. lot of stress from that. Uh, their basic chores, like I said, you know, cleaning up, loading on, loading the dishwasher. Uh, okay, let me stop you there. Stress from that. Okay, so you don't think there's any stress from the system, is that correct? Correct. Okay, uh, did, did you hear the same thing I did, that... Gianna said that she was having stress from the system? No, uh, I heard Gianna's testimony, sir. Okay, but you don't believe that's accurate? Um, I think that there's stress for Gianna in the system, uh, just for the fact of doing chores around the house. I don't believe it's an undue stress. I don't believe it's a, uh, any stress that would affect her schoolwork, as it's being stated. I don't believe it's any stress that's affecting her sports, as being stated. Um, I think the amount of stress that Gianna's feeling from this is, is very minimal. All right. Um, do you agree or disagree when I suggest to you that you and her mother should have co-parenting counseling? Yes, I would agree to co-parenting counseling. All right. And uh, you agree that your ability to co-parent is certainly uh, lessened because of your inability, both of your inability to talk to each other. Yes, I would agree that communication is a ongoing issue between Leanne and myself. And you and you suggest that you want to change the parenting time. Uh, you are aware that that suggestion has been floated before a week on week off and that's been rejected by Leanne. Are you aware of that? Yes, sir, I am. Uh, that was rejected by okay, Leanne and, and, a few years ago. And it's uh, yeah, and you're also now. aware that that's been rejected. You're also aware that's been rejected by Gianna. Has she told you that? Uh, Gianna has told me that, but Gianna has also, uh, you know, said that she would not mind a trial at some point or that she might be open to a trial at some point with a week on, week off. If I suggest to you that uh, the problem with the week on, week on, off is that she would be under your system longer without a break, you... Or see that Objection, Mr. Strafer's testifying. Yeah, that was not testified to. Well, I think he can ask the uh, question and frame uh, the question, so I'll give him some leeway for that. If if the week on, week off took place, that would put Gianna in a situation where she has no break from your system for almost a week. Don't you foresee that as a problem based on Gianna testifying she's had stress with the system? I don't believe that uh, 
a break is needed from the system. I mean, it's unloading and loading a dishwasher. It's doing a one load of laundry and running a vacuum on a weekly basis. Uh, I think that everyone's household does that. Or I would assume that uh, and every household point, should have and, and every household should have your light bulbs taken away and an eviction uh, statement on your door uh, relegated as to what shower you can use. You think that is I, not I'm not saying that test? every household oh, I'm sorry. I'm not saying that every household should have eviction notices or their light shut off. But what I am saying is that there are households that there are eviction notices placed on and there are households where people are, their heat is shut off. I mean, every year you read in the paper how Consumers Energy is putting a stay on gas bills because people can't pay their bills and it's super cold out. So those things happen in life. And uh, so you think that your daughter at 14 needs to go through that uh, that stress? Is that what you're suggesting? No, I'm not suggesting that she has to go through that stress and she wouldn't need to go through the stress. Uh, I, I I hate to use the word stress because I don't think it is. Um, but no, I think at 14, I think is a good age to be able to learn responsibility. I think at 14, she should earn uh, learn the value of a dollar. So when she comes to me and says, hey, can I have 20 bucks for V-Bucks three times a week? She understands that, hey, $60, while it doesn't seem like a lot, it takes a lot to get that $60. Uh, you had indicated that you had encouraged the relationship between Gianna and her grandmother. Uh, have, uh, have you, grand uh, are you talking about Leanne's mother or my mother? Your mother. Yes, I have always had uh, encouraged the relationship with uh, my mother and Gianna. Uh, the relationship that I have with my mom has been strained. Uh, over the last few years, uh, five years. Um, and, but I've never let that affect how Gianna's relationship is with her. I know that Gianna goes to lunches with her. Um, I can't honestly tell you the last time that my mom reached out to me and asked for time with Gianna. Um, but I have never said no. The only time I've said no would be if Gianna already had something going on or that we already previously had plans in place. Uh, when's the last time you reached out to your mother to uh, make arrangements with Gianna and her? Um, like I said, it's been a while. Um, I don't I don't have a conversation or a very good relationship with my mother, and I don't reach out to her on a regular basis for that reason. So, not only on a regular basis, not at all, correct? No, sir, that would be incorrect. Okay, when's the last time you reached out to your mother? Um, it would have been in September. Tell me the situation. Uh, I sent my mom a text message. She answered. And what did the text message say? Hey, you want to get together with Gianna? No, sir, it did not. When's the last time you reached out to your mother concerning Gianna? Um, I guess I failed to see the correlation of how reaching out to my mom about Gianna. My mom is more than willing to send me a message or a phone call. She can call Gianna. Um, I know that my mom has reached out to Leanne to spend time with Gianna. So uh, if you're trying to say that I'm not facilitating that relationship, I would say that that's wrong. Um, you know, my mom- Ronnie, could he to... answer the question, please? Uh, we're getting a, a narrative. Well, he can, but I think- we're getting the last time he reached out to his mother? Well, yeah, we're getting a little bit Gianna. healed as to these particular issues or what we're here for today. So I, I've, I've let it go a little bit, but we're getting a little bit to some irrelevant issues. My question is, when is the last time you reached out to your mother concerning Gianna? The last time that I reached out to my mother concerning Gianna would have been when I received her letter in the mail I do and not. That, know uh, would have been the, okay. And uh, when uh, have you ever in the last five years reached out to your mother to connect Gianna with her? Uh, no, I'm sure that I have. I'm, I, okay. I can't remember everything that's happened in the last five years, sir, but I know that we've spent Fourth of July's out at my mom's house. Um, I know that we've had uh, Christmas phone calls. I know that there's been incidents where you know, we have we meet with her and her husband for lunches, uh, but I cannot testify to that. Uh, also, 
it's okay for my mom to reach out to me okay. anytime she wants and or to reach out to Gianna anytime she wants. I, I really, I, I guess I don't know what you're asking. Uh, you, you brought up on your testimony the, the counseling issue again. And I guess, the, do you realize that you were in violation of the order of, of joint custody by doing that unilaterally? Um, no, sir, I did not. I also don't believe that it was done unilaterally. Uh, like I said, the Jackson Healing Clinic made an effort to try to reach out to Leanne, and I, it was on Leanne uh, to communicate with them, and she did not, apparently. So as a result of that, you went ahead and rolled, correct? Uh, as a res result of talking with the Jackson Healing Clinic and them, you know, and a conversation I had with them, yes, I moved forward with the counseling. Yeah. What is the reason that you will not allow Gianna to have the phone that her mother purchased for? Uh, we provide a phone for Gianna in, in our home, and I don't see a need for her to bring her mother's phone over to my house. Well, Gianna, Gianna had given a uh, reason. Okay, just a second. Gianna had given a reason because you were afraid that Leanne was going to be monitoring or listening in at your home. It's, uh, is, is that an accurate statement? I can say that when Gianna brought her phone from her mom's house, there was a strange hit on our Wi-Fi system. Uh, and it hit every time Gianna was here with her mom's phone. And when the phone stopped coming over to my house, that Wi-Fi hit ceased. So is the answer to my question, yes, that's one reason that the phone is not allowed in your home? No, Gianna's, yeah, her mom's phone is not allowed in my home because of anomalies that happen on our Wi-Fi system that are unexplained. So Gianna was telling the truth when she made that statement, correct? I don't believe Gianna made that statement about the Wi-Fi hits. I believe she made the statement that the phone was not allowed because you were fearful of Leanne listening in on your home area. I believe that's what Gianna testified to. Is that an accurate statement? Uh, no. Like I said, we had anomaly Wi-Fi hits, and they seemed to be correlating with Gianna. And the only thing that was different was the phone from her mom's house. What is the reason, then, that uh, that phone was not allowed on your trip to Florida? Uh we wanted to have a family trip. We didn't want to have distractions. We didn't want to have kids sitting and playing on their phones the whole time. We didn't want to have uh, outside distractions. It was a very expensive trip to Walt Disney World and Universal Studios, and we wanted to have a family experience. Your recollection on the uh, soup episode, the potato soup episode, is that you ate Potato soup too. You you and uh, uh, April didn't eat something else. No, we we had ate. I believe we ate potato soup. I can't tell you what I've had for dinner yesterday, as opposed to months ago. But there's never been a punishment where John was made to eat something that nobody else ate. Are you willing to uh, do away with your system in your home in relation to the? the punishments and the chores and so forth. Uh, are you asking me that children shouldn't have chores? No, I'm asking you if you're willing to do away with the system that you have in effect. Uh, the system has pretty much gone away. Uh, they're still required to do chores. Uh, they're still required to do the dishes and clean the bathrooms and stuff. They just don't get an allowance for it now. Uh, do they get uh, punishments such as uh, light bulbs being taken and eviction notices? No. So you've changed your system? Uh, we stopped paying them allowance to do chores. Now they just continue to do the same chores for no allowance. You had heard the uh, testimony of Mrs. Hasselback that, that apparently Gianna was upset or stressed or 
concerned about their system. Do you uh, dis disagree with her upset with the system as uh, related by Ms. Hasselbeck? I don't know what information Ms. Hasselbeck had. Uh, Ms. Hasselbeck's never been in my home. Uh, the home that she was in was when we were on Hallett Street. We've since moved from that location. Uh, so whatever information she has, has definitely been from a third party. So I can't testify to what Ms. Hasselbeck said or the information that she has. All right. Uh, no further question this time, Your Honor. Thank you. Okay. Ms. Reed, any uh, redirect? Yes, Your Honor. James, is the reason you you stopped, or one of the reasons you stopped the system is because you're being accused of child abuse? Correct. And do you believe it is child abuse to teach the children a budget? No, I do not. And this particular corrective action of the light bulbs and not using the big shower was one instance, is that correct? That is correct. And it was for one day? That is correct. I have no further questions. Okay. I may follow up on that, Your Honor? If you must. By whom were you accused of uh, being, tra being child abuse? Uh, I believe the motions that you and um, Leanne filed equate to child abuse. And I think that's how you guys were trying to word it. So are you uh, referring to this case in the pleadings? Is that what you're referring to? No, sir. I'm referring to the motions that you filed to bring this evidentiary hearing. Are you referring to any other accusations from your mother or anybody else of accusing you of child abuse? No, sir. I'm referring to the motion, like I said, that you guys, that uh, Leanne filed to bring this evidentiary hearing forth. Okay. Thank you. No further questions, Your Honor. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, uh, Mr. Hageman. That concludes your testimony. Uh, Ms. Reed, I see that uh, you have just uh, the uh, plaintiff's spouse as your last witness. Well, Mr. Schaefer's. I don't know. We're going to take Mr. Schaefer's witness out of order uh, this afternoon and then go with with uh, Ms. Hageman. Uh, Ms. Reed, is that what your thoughts are? I'm fine either way. Okay. Mr. Schaefer, is that, uh, how's that? Uh, I guess, Ms. Reed, how long do you think you're well, going to do with Ms. Hagman? Ms. Hagman should not take long. Okay. Well, is, is, is she on, uh, is she in the waiting room right now? Why don't we take her now and get that done? Okay. Uh, James. James, you want to go get her? Yes. Ms. Hagman, how long have you lived with James? Oh, since 2016, I believe October-ish. Of 2016, we lived on Hallett Street at the time. They moved okay. in with, with me. And have you and James come up with a system regarding chores for the children in your home? We did. And what is that chore system? It's pretty elaborate, actually. Um, my profession, I am HR. I do payroll. I run payroll for thousands of people. And so I made a very realistic paycheck stub, pay statement. And we went through like, it's like percentages of what bills would really be and like a real working wage, et cetera, and then deducted bills from there. So they would have a set amount each month, one portion going to a quote 401k going to their green light card, and then the other portion going again to their green light card, but not as a savings as a spending account. Okay. And there's a list of chores that they have to do in order to get an allowance? That is correct. And who, what happens when the children don't do their chores? To be completely honest with you, for the first month or so, they weren't doing their chores, nothing. Absolutely nothing. We tried to remind them, tried to encourage them to keep doing them, and they just weren't. And then there were a couple of times my husband came home from work, and he was not thrilled. And he was like, look, you know, get back on these. This is important. And they would for like a day, and then it would just fall off again. Okay. And then was there a time as part of the consequence for not doing chores that light bulbs were removed from Gianna's room? From both Baron and Gianna's room. That is correct. Did they have other lights in their room? They do. They have LED right lights around their room. They have three, three different, like, um, I don't know, like neon glowy things. And they both have lamps as well. 
Okay, and were there any other restrictions placed on the children regarding not doing their chores? There was. Uh, so we had closed their bathroom door because it's much larger uh, and asked them to use the other smaller bathroom off on the other side of the house. And we thought we had the key to the door, but evidently we misplaced it because we had locked it and just closed it like, oh, we'll unlock it. Well, uh, we couldn't find that key, so we had to drill the hole and put a new a new doorknob on it. And how long were these restrictions about the light bulbs in the shower and that one bathroom in place? A day. It was that night. And the children spent most of their evening out here with us in the living room. Okay. It's been alleged that Gianna's denied the necessities of life. Is that true? It is far from the truth. It's been alleged that she doesn't have the ability to maintain reasonable hygiene in the house. Is that true? Far from the truth. Um, it's also been alleged that She's been forced to eat different meals than the rest of the family. Is that true? That is. The only time that's been true is when we have like steaks. She doesn't like meat with bones in it. So she has cooked a completely separate meal being, well, not the rest of the meal, but the meat. She prefers chicken breast. So we'll grill her some chicken breast or fry her some in a pan or something or bake it, whatever she wants. And that's not part of any sort of punishment or restriction. That's something she's requesting? That's something she's requesting, yes. Okay her preference i don't she doesn't usually have to ask for that we just do that because we know that's what she prefers okay is she ever restricted from the pantry or the kitchen no the only time she's ever been restricted from anything in the pantry was when she was wanting a fourth a fourth serving of oreo cookies and her father did not want her to have a fourth serving of oreo cookies okay and that wasn't a part of any punishment absolutely not the responsibility, parental responsibility, I would label that as. Okay. Who's the enforcer of the rules? I do not do anything about Gianna. The, nothing because of what JP has to deal with. I, He has a little bit more say with my son, but we have a better working relationship with the other parents. And so we all kind of are his team. But okay, so you're not responsible and you do not reprimand or... Or correct, Gianna. If she's using like a really foul tone or something, I'll go, hey, tone. But other than that, no. Okay. Punishment-wise, I want nothing to do with that. Can you describe your relationship with Gianna? Yeah, at first it was great. It was really great. She really clicked with me. You know, the kids got along well. They play really well. And we would do things. And then it started to sour about six months into the... James and I's relationship and it uh, really went downhill from there. You know, obviously I won't say comments that she said because that's hearsay, but it's definitely coming from one direction. So we don't talk as much anymore, but like we go out shopping and we just laugh and giggle sometimes. And we definitely have a blast picking on dad about his dad jokes. And we play a lot of family games, which we definitely have a lot of fun doing. What is your relationship like with her right now? Well, you know, Gianna, since all of this has been going on, she's been really scared. She's scared to say anything about anything anywhere. But she comes out of her show, you know, after she gets back to our house, about an hour or so, she clicks right back to being funny Gianna and just joking and having fun with the rest of us. Do you treat Gianna like she's your daughter? Well, yes and no. Uh, I try to back off of that because many times it's been told to me that I am not Gianna's mother. I will not be Gianna's mother. And I'm not Gianna's mother, nor do uh, I want to be. Apparently that's hearsay. I don't know who the, uh, you know who's saying it. I didn't state. Well. Uh, it's in text message. It's, it's a, she, she's addressed this. Not a, of course, not going to rely much on the, any of that. So let's move on. Thank you. How do you show Gianna love and affection? We, we just joke around. We joke around once in a while when she needs a hug, she'll ask for a hug and I hug her. I definitely take time to, like we have a secret little thing. So when we went to Disney, somehow I ended up being the last person in line because I put everybody in order. So she was April number one because for some reason it named everybody April Hageman. And so I was April number five. And now we have a little high five thing where we high five and she does this for one and five. That's like our our little thing. Okay. What activities do you share with Gianna? We, she really likes my help with English homework. 
So she comes to me a lot with that. Dad does the math. <laughs> I'm a little better at the English. Okay. And have you observed Gianna being under stress in your house? Yes, I have. And is that, do you believe it's related to the chores? No, I don't. I When I see Gianna under stress, it's like if we're at a sporting event and we're talking to Gianna and her mom comes up or if she's with her mom and we're walking in, she gets very, very nervous to the point she can't even say words. She stumbles over her words. Um, have you used this system um, for rewards and chores before? Yes, I have. Something similar, not quite elaborate. This time, my girls had chores. They had like chore sticks and everybody would choose a chore stick that week and, you know, they would be afforded an allowance. And if they didn't do their chores, they would have things taken away as well. Okay. Do you have any communication with Leanne? I try not to. Okay. I've, I've tried to reach out and give, you know, like I did wine and roses for a group of friends and included Included Leanne because Gianna wanted to. I've sent snacks home that, you know, Gianna and I spent like 16 hours one weekend doing cocoa bounds and holiday treats. And she took them home. And that was a thing. And, you know, that was a thing. And, you know, I there was a conversation between Leanne and I about uh, the counseling. I I had no choice in the counseling. I wasn't trying to have a choice. I only reached out because it was under my health care, and I needed to make sure the provider was going to be accepted by my health care. We, we alone provide her health care. Okay, and is Jenna on your health care now, or is she on James's? Both. Both? Yep, okay. both, and she's double covered on dental as well. Have you ever made disparaging comments about Leanne in front of Gianna? No. We do not speak about her in our home. Are you willing to facilitate a close relationship between Gian and her mom? Absolutely. I even went and spoke with a counselor as well to try to navigate some kind of something because this the situation just isn't healthy for anyone, and especially that little girl. And when you say the situation, is it the situation regarding chores and the consequences, and yeah. or is it a co-parenting issue? The co-parenting issue. I, I, it's, I just can't fathom it. I don't have the same issues. With. My son will flat out tell you, I have two moms. That's great that he has that. I in no way, shape, or form want the same, but it, I've never had an issue like this. It's just not healthy. Is your home clean? Eh, it's lived in, but it's clean. We vacuum pretty regularly. I have some, we're, we're under construction. We just built a new kitchen. Uh, so we have some things going on there. So we have like a couple boxes of kitchen items out in the living room to the side, but we have a pretty large home, so it doesn't take up space that we would use. Okay. Do you participate in Gianna's extracurricular activities? I do. James and I both actually coached when she was younger, coached basketball at Spring Arbor, at the Spring Arbor Church. Uh, on that league. She was on that league for quite a few years during elementary school. My son also started playing on that league on the boys team. And so we coached both teams. And we show up, I, I actually, I actually turned down a really nice job offer uh, for quite a bit more money because it wasn't going to be as flexible. So I wanted to make sure I could help Gianna and JP get her back and forth whenever possible. I have a pretty flexible job, but not completely. And were there some issues with getting Gianna back and forth to an optional weightlifting? There was. This, well, this summer? I believe it was one time. So on pay week, um, when I'm processing payroll, again, it's for thousands of people. We're international. And I, I can't leave during certain times. There's a very finite timeline of, pro the, of the process. So during that process, I, I have to concentrate on my payroll. And it just fell on a day where she was here and I was finalizing payroll. And there's no way I have to do that by around 1030 a.m. Otherwise, no one will get paid on time. So I could not facilitate getting her there and back during that one. Have you and JP tried to arrange other transportation for this optional summer camp? We have. She's gotten rides with other other children's parents as well. Okay. 
I have no further questions. Mr. Schaefer. Uh, Ms. Hegeman, uh, you and Gianna have had conversations, one of which where you had called uh, Leanne a liar uh, to her. Do you recall that event? That's not true. You don't, you don't recall calling Leanne a liar to Gianna? I don't recall lies. No, I don't because it did not happen. So I cannot therefore recall it. Okay. And um, have you called Gianna disrespectful? I don't believe so. Have you uh, monitored and read her diary? Absolutely not. I don't go in that child's room because it's pretty gross. Have you, uh, are you saying that you have or have not seen stress uh, with Gianna uh, in your home in 2003, 23, excuse me? I've seen her be stressed about things not related to chores. Okay, so you, you don't think your system has caused stress to her? I think when someone's being alienated or manipulated that they probably get stressed about things that they normally wouldn't be stressed about. So you're absolutely convinced this is all manipulation. This is not something that uh, Gianna is is suffering from in your home. Is that what I hear from you? Sir, I'm giving you my opinion. I can't say in a definite way. And you I'm, apparently I'm, have no I'm relationship not Gianna. with... You apparently have no relationship with Leanne. You don't talk to her. You, uh, Her name is not mentioned in your house, you said. Is that accurate? Not often. Like if it's like, hey, you know your mom will be here to pick you up a certain time or things like that. But we don't disparage her. We do not disparage her. What, what, what do you encourage her with Gianna? We tell her we want her to have a good relationship with her mom. We hope the best for her mom. Uh, what is your opinion as to why Gianna's phone that's supplied by her mother is not allowed in your house? I don't really have an opinion about that. Yeah. Let's, let's back it up then. Is the phone that Leanne provides for Gianna allowed in your house? I don't make those rules for Gianna. I've told you I'm not the enforcer of Gianna's rules, sir. My, my question was, is it allowed in the house? That was a rule enforced by her father that it is not. So so the, is the answer to my question yes? It, no. That phone is not, not allowed it, in No, it's, it's not allowed in our home. I just said that. Okay, that was the question. Thank you. Do you know the reason why it's not allowed in your house? Uh, no, I can't tell you that. I mean, we've discussed, we've discussed things, my husband and I, but. So in those discussions, you don't know the reason why it's not allowed. Correct? Not all of the way, no. We decided to get her a phone. No further questions, Your Honor. Okay, thank you. Anything else, Ms. Reed? No, Your Honor. Okay. Ms. Hageman, thank you for your testimony, your excuse. You have a wonderful day. Thank you. You as well. Why don't we do this? Why don't we take a, a, a recess at this point for uh, noon and uh, come back? You have someone coming in at one fifteen, Mr. Schaefer? I've got somebody scheduled for one fifteen. That is correct. Okay. Why don't we do this? Why don't we come back at – let's come back at one thirty. Because I think I have some other things I have to do during the lunch hour to get completed before then. So I don't know when I'm going to be um, able to reconvene. So let's recess and uh, come back at good afternoon. Welcome back. Uh, afternoon, Judge. Thank you. Schaefer, I, I guess uh, at this point the proofs are with you and you have an additional witness. I have an additional uh, witness of Carol Masternick. Okay. Yeah. Is she in the waiting room? Yes, let me bring her in. And uh, Ms. Mac Messernack, uh, how are you uh, related to Gianna? I'm Gianna's paternal grandmother. JP is my son. Okay. And uh, in that capacity, have you known Gianna all of her life? Yes, I have. Okay. And how, how would you describe your relationship with Gianna? <clears throat> I think that Gianna and I have a very nice relationship. I get to see her quite frequently at the lake. 
we live at Duck Lake, as do her other grandparents. And as a result, we get to play in the water and go for walks and talk quite a bit. Okay. And um, had it come to your attention in July of a new system that your son had in his home in relation to a, to a discipline or uh, chores? Actually, I did not hear about it until October. Gianna had mentioned that they were doing some different things, but each time she started to talk, it just seemed like there was something that happened. Um, the dog, okay. the puppy. And uh, did you have occasion to address your concerns, if you had any, with your son? I did. I didn't learn the entire story from Gianna until shortly before we were getting ready to leave for Florida for the winter. And at that time, I wrote quite a lengthy letter to JP. And um, on the day that he was to receive it, he texted me that morning and had gotten a message from the post office saying that he was receiving a letter from me and what was it about. So uh, we texted back and forth. And um, I was very clear with him how unhappy I was with the decisions that they had made and that uh, when developing a behavior plan, you want to use positive uh, reinforcements to change the behavior, not the punitive negative things that I heard and saw, well, heard from Gianna going on, um, the light bulbs. And did, the you, did you see, uh, did you see uh, uh, what reaction Gianna was having to this system? Oh, she was very, very uh, disheartened. She told me that she had failed. Objection. You're saying. Okay. Uh, uh, Madison, you can't tell us. Go ahead, Mr. Schaefer. Okay. I'm sorry. Uh, you, you can't tell us what she said. My question is, did you see uh, any reaction that she had to it without telling us what she said? Yes. I okay, saw. What did you. When, what did you when I was talking with Gianna, she uh, was uh, sullen and sad and um, concerned and said that one of the things that had really. Objection. Here's a. Oh, okay. that Again, you, can, you can't tell us what she says. Okay. okay. It's difficult for you to do. I realize, but concentrate I, on. Okay. And, so, and, uh, yes. and uh, based on your observations of her, was this in relation to the system that she was under in your son's home? Yes. And did you confront JP with your concerns for Gianna about this system? I did in writing because we were leaving for Florida. And then I did by text. Okay. okay by text. Uh, did uh, JP indicate to you that uh, he would abide by some of your suggestions of, of your concerns? Not at all. He. What was his reaction to your concerns? He was angry and he felt like I should have contacted him. And I had shared that I was comfortable with what I heard, that I was certain that what I was being told was the truth and that um, I couldn't be more disappointed in him. All right. And, uh, Tell me about your relationship with your son. Uh, what is the current relationship with him? JP has not spoken to me or texted or had any communication since the day that that letter arrived. All right. Uh, have, have you uh, had an opportunity to foster your relationship with Gianna uh, through uh, other efforts? Yes. I see Gianna. And what... Go ahead. I text Gianna back and forth. We talk on the phone when she's at her mother's house. Um, I can only text her on the phone that she has when she's with her mother. I can't communicate directly with her when she's with her father. I don't know that phone number. Why is that? Why, I've never why, why been given can't you call her when? Because... I've never been given the Go phone. Ahead. I can only contact her through JP. <clears throat> uh, where, did you become aware of some difficulties that your granddaughter was having with her academics during this time period? Yes. I understand that she failed a history test. On the week, in the week that uh, the punitive actions of removing the light bulbs and turning the water off in the bathroom occurred. And I understand that she had never, ever failed a test prior to that time, that she's been an all-A okay. student. Now, what is your, okay, what is your background? I'm a retired Are teacher. You I'm a retired teacher consultant for students with autism. I retired from Jackson County ISD uh, with 35 years of experience, and I continue to contract services. I just have finished a uh, term of teaching chemistry at our local high school down here, Riverdale High School. Today was my last day. Okay. okay. And uh, where are you located right now? We winter in Florida and we have a home in Elva, Florida, just outside of Fort Myers on the Caloosahatchee River. Okay. Now, 
have you been in contact with Leanne? Yes, I have. And have you observed her uh, behavior and uh, uh, the bonding or the lack of bonding with uh, Gianna? I'm not sure. Are you saying that Leanne has bonded with Gianna? No. Have you observed the relationship between Leanne and Gianna? Yes, I have. Okay. And would you relate to the court what you've observed in that regard? It's a very positive relationship. They have a jet ski and they oftentimes jet ski up to our dock and we'll stand in the water and talk with uh, Tom and I and take us for rides. Uh, they're very loving with one another. They do quite a bit of camping. Uh, when they bring the trailer to the lake, they invite uh, Gianna's other cousins to stay overnight. They've invited us up for uh, bonfires. And um, I think that Leanne and Gianna have a very warm and loving, supportive parental relationship. Okay. When is the last time that you've observed uh, your son and Gianna together? Uh, it would have been on his birthday, July 3rd or 4th. It was during that time when we he invited us to meet them for a dinner at a restaurant off of M50. And uh, Tom and I went and met JP and Baron and Gianna. April came in for just a little bit, but then she left. Okay. Uh, do you have an opinion as to what the relationship between uh, JP and Gianna is? I'm certain that JP loves Gianna and that Gianna loves JP. I feel that I've seen a degradation in the relationship between the two of them over the last few years because of outside influences of activities and things that go on in their home. Yeah. Uh, from a grandmother standpoint and from your experience as a teacher, do you are you concerned about Gianna's emotional affect, if you will, uh, since this system has been put into effect? I'm absolutely concerned about her emotional well-being. And that was a point that I brought out in the letter, both to JP in the letter and in texting, that I felt that there was emotional and psychological damage being done and that because of the way that um, they have talked about her mother in front of her, that she doesn't- Objection, Your Honor, we don't have foundation for any of this testimony. Okay. Well, if you can lay a foundation well, the, 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 uh, have. Have you uh, talked to Gianna about uh, what may have been said about Leanne uh, to her by her father? Oh, yes. She was heartbroken. And when I wrote the letter okay. to JP, I had asked okay, him okay. to please not talk bad about Leanne in front of Gianna, that it's damaging and that she doesn't know where she stands. She loves you both. Okay. Um, the hearing today is in relation to custody and where Gianna should spend most of her time. As a grandmother, and based on your experience, do you have an opinion as to what would be in her best interest? Yes, I do. And what is that? I feel that Gianna isn't getting the support academically and with her sports and her friends within the home of her dad because of extenuating circumstances. And I think that she would be much better off in her own bedroom, in her house with her mother, where she feels supported and loved and secure. Okay. Uh, no further questions, Your Honor. Thank you. Ms. Reed, uh, any cross-examination? Yes. Ma'am, have you been to JP's home? I have been to JP's home. When was the last time you were there? The last time I was there, do you want me to give details or the date? You kind of broke up there. What was that? Do you want me to give the details of that or just the date? When when were you last there, the date? Uh, it was Easter several years ago, three, maybe four. So you have not observed what happens inside of JP's home? I've also been in the driveway dropping off and picking up things. And they have been at our home when his sister is in town from New Mexico. And I have observed things. I was at the train station when they came in from Chicago together. Yes, but you I have not heard. you have not observed JP parenting Gianna in his own home. <laughs> That's not, I have not since that date. Okay. Did you send a text message to Miss Hagman that says um no Ms. that Reed, she could you clear could you clarify which Miss Hagman? We have two of them. Leanne Hagman? Okay, thank you. That says know that she did nothing wrong, know that no matter what she says, it won't be right. Know that she must utter the words, quote, I want to live at mom's house. And know that answering, when answering parents' questions, she does not have to tell all. 
Is this a, a message to Gianna? This is a message from you to Miss Hagman. Well, if it's from me, then yes, I did it. <laughs> and so you're of the opinion that a child should keep information from parents? I'm of the, the opinion that Gianna has not been well cared for emotionally and psychologically. Ma'am, that wasn't, okay. that wasn't my question. My question okay. was, do you believe that it's okay for a child to keep information from parents? I think that when a child is asked a question by the parents, they should be honest and open. They should not lie to their parents. And you did not contact JP regarding your concerns to verify what the allegations were? I did contact JP. I did not. We were leaving on a Tuesday morning to Florida for the winter. And when I heard about what had, what had happened, I heard it on Thursday night, quite late. And I didn't want to react to that until I had more. I heard about it, not in its entirety. I did not hear the whole story until Monday, at which time I went home and spent hours writing that letter so that I could send it out on my way leaving Albion in the mail. If it were so distressing and so concerning, why didn't you call him instead of writing a letter? Because JP doesn't always listen to the entire conversation. If he becomes angry, he may hang up on me. If he becomes angry, he may raise his voice and yell. And the message is lost. I wanted him to hear about behavior modifications and how you change it positively. I wanted him to recall what it was like when he grew up in our home. I wanted him to recall that the kinds of stresses that Gianna was experiencing, he had never experienced in his own home. And why was he allowing this to happen? I wanted him to hear it all. And he was so enraged by the letter that he sent it back, returned to sender. So I texted it to him. Would it change your opinion if the allegations were not true? I don't believe that Gianna is lying. But my question was, would it change your opinion if the allegations were not true? I'm not quite sure how you're, it's kind of like a double negative. Are you asking me whether or not what? You're saying that you believe Gianna was telling the truth. Yes. If she wasn't telling the truth and the things that they're alleging that happened did not happen, would that change your opinion? No, because I have witnessed other things that give me great concern. This is just the icing on the cake, and I'd be glad to share those as well. When did you witness these things? At my home, when we had a family gathering, swimming in the water. When? Was one time. When? Another time was Easter when? Sunday at their when? house. My, my question is, when did this happen? Uh, summer before last and the Easter dinner that we had at their home. So this is eight months ago or over a year ago, and now you're saying that these are very pressing matters. I, I'm answering your question that I have concerns because of the things that I have witnessed and the conversation that I've had with my son regarding what I saw. Those were conversations. I have no further questions. Okay. Any uh, redirect, Mr. Schaefer? Yes. Uh, Ms. Masinak, you were asked a question. You said there were other things that concerned you also. Can you tell us what those other things are? One of the concerns I had was when we had Draven and Jace, who are JP's sis, um, ne ne nephews, in town, and they were swimming. It was Draven, Jace, Baron, and Gianna. Baron is JP's stepson, and he was Baron was on the float yelling to Draven and Jace to call Gianna fat. Look, she's so fat; she looks like she's pregnant. Tell her she's pregnant. Tell her she's pregnant. I stopped, walked over to him, and said, "We don't talk like that. If you say that again, you will sit on the dock." He pouted, walked over to his mom, and I thought I should tell JP what I said. I walked up to JP. We were both standing in the water, JP and I. And I said, JP, this is what happened. And I told him what Baron said. And he said, oh, mom, they're just being kids. I said, that is unacceptable behavior. We do not talk like that. We do not gang up on adolescent girls and body shame them, period. Not acceptable. And JP walked away. Another time was Easter Sunday. Other matters I'm sorry, go ahead. Okay, go ahead. Yep. Another thing that I witnessed was Easter Sunday when they had invited us for dinner and uh, we had all had a very nice dinner at their home and Leanne drove into the driveway to pick up Gianna. She knocked on the door, their dog Stormy started barking and running to the door, JP took the dog and went down the hallway and all of us were still seated and someone at the table said, let her in. Objection here, saying. Okay, so saying, not for the truth of the matter, Your Honor, just get point A to point B. 
Okay. Well, I'll let it in. Go ahead. So I got up and walked to the door and Leanne was at the door. Leanne greeted me with a hug as she always does and uh, told, and there were things in her car that she had brought that belonged to us and JP's family. So Tom and I walked out into the driveway. Gianna walked out into the driveway. Uh, JP was out there and Leanne. They, Leanne had Tom look at her tires. She thought there was something wrong with them. JP took stuff out of the trunk and put it in his garage. And uh, I said goodbye and hugged Gianna and walked back in the house when April grabbed her computer off the table, was literally screaming, not uh, was screaming, we're going to leave, we're going to leave. And she ran down the hallway calling her son, Baron, at the top of her lungs. Tom came in the house and said, what is going on? I said, I don't know. We need to get our things and leave. JP came in the house and he said, what is going on? I said, honestly, I don't know. We have to leave. And Tom and I left. And I don't know what to say other than the behavior that I saw was abnormal. It was abnormal behavior. And when I talked to JP about it, I said, JP, if that screaming is going on in front of me, it has to be going on in front of the children too. Is that happening? And he said, I'd be lying to you if I said it didn't happen every now and then. And, and she probably could have, she probably didn't handle it as well as she could have. Okay. Any other events that uh, you put under the other things? There are several other times with interactions and different kinds of things that have happened. Almost too numerous to count. I'm, I'm sorry to say it's, you know, at one time we had a loving relationship of JP, Leanne, Gianna, Tom, me together, Kristen, and it's kind of all gone for naught in the last four or five years. Uh, never before. Thank you for your testimony. No further questions. Okay. Ms. Reed, anything else? No, Your Honor. Okay. Ms. Masternak, thank you for your testimony. You're excused. You have a good day. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Schaefer, any additional witnesses or testimony? Not on director. I do have a rebuttal if the Defense has rested, I, and I haven't heard that. Okay, I thought that when we... Well, I'll just ask that. Ms. Reed, do you rest at this point? I uh, recall Mr. Hagman to rebut some of the testimony that was just presented by the witness because okay. we called witnesses out of order. Okay. Uh, Mr. Hagman, you're still you're still under oath, you understand? Yes, sir. Okay, go ahead, Ms. Reed. Mr. Hagman, do you recall the incident that your mother just testified to about when some cousins and Baron were trying to make fun of Gianna? Uh, yes, I do. What is your recollection of that event? So that event happened when my sister came from New Mexico to visit. She usually comes about once every two years. She brought her, her sons, Draven and Jace. They are um, a year or two years younger than Baron and Gianna. So similar in age, but not. Um, everybody was playing and swimming in the lake. Both Draven and Jace, those are my nephews, we're repeatedly calling Baron a douchebag. We're repeatedly picking on Gianna. We're repeatedly, you know, being aggressive and wrestling with Baron in the water. And I mean, everybody was wrestling. It seemed like it was fun, but it got to the point where Baron really wasn't having fun wrestling anymore. So he'd swam out on the dock. Then the boys, you know, started picking on Gianna. And I think at that time, then Baron had said, um, you know, what my mom had said. And none of the other things were ever addressed. Uh, Draven and Jace were allowed to call Baron a douchebag repeatedly steps away from my mother. Um, and that was never said. And the only comment that was ever said was directed at Baron, you know, chastising Baron for being the only one, quote unquote, that was involved in this, which was simply not the case. All of the children were involved in it. Um, so I, I, I just really find it. I don't know. I'm, I'm taking it back that it was remembered that only Baron was the one that was involved in this. When I said it was kids being kids, calling each other names and Baron being the only one that was reprimanded out of the whole group when all of them were, you know, quite frankly, being very rude to each other. Did you address this with Baron? Uh, yeah, I told him that it's not okay for them to be calling him a douchebag, and I'll talk to the, I'll talk to my boys about it, uh, my nephews about it. I've also had other conversations with my nephews. Uh, I've played video games with them over the internet, and quite frankly, they have mouths like sailors. For, you know, 10 and 11 year old boys, I mean, they're dropping the F word like it's going out of style. And I let my sister know. And it's kind of just swept under the rug that that type of behavior and that type of language is OK. Did you address Baron um, making those statements to Gianna to Baron? Yes, I did. Uh, I addressed Baron as well. And he understood that it was, you know, not right. Uh, Gianna, I've also addressed Gianna in a similar matter when, you know, she's um, 
quite frankly, assaulted Baron. I mean, they have, they've, they're kids. And I'm not saying that fighting or physical violence is okay in any way, or that name calling is okay in any way, because it's not. Um, unfortunately, with children, that things happen. And when those come up, I address those with the parties that are involved. And I think I have a pretty good view of and idea of, you know, who's responsible for what and incidences. I guess I don't have blinders on, as, as, as I'll say. Um, your mom had testified that there was an incident during Easter where April was screaming and grabbing her laptop and going down the hallway. Do you recall that? Yes, I do. Was she screaming and yelling? Uh, no, she was upset um, at uh, the actions of Leanne in that instance and the actions of my mom and how she reacted in that instance. And um, yeah, April, April was upset. But she wasn't screaming? No, I don't believe she was screaming. Uh, Leanne has never, ever gotten out of her car when she's come to my house. If it's a pickup or if it's a drop off, uh, you know, there's been times where she doesn't even pull in the driveway. She'll drop Gianna off at the end of the road and make her walk up the road to the driveway. And Leanne knew, cause I had to ask her, you know, going back to this back and forth thing that we had. Um, I said, Hey, we planned Easter with my mom. Is there any chance I can have a little bit of extra time to have dinner with my mom? And Leanne said that was okay. So she knew my mom was going to be there. And that is the only time Leanne has ever come to even knock on the door of my house, knowing that my mom was there. Uh, and I think it was done intentionally to try to uh, make some sort of posture or some sort of, hey, look at what a great relationship I have with your mom type of thing. Um, your mom had stated that you said something along the lines of, yes, April does scream frequently or on occasion in the house. Is that true? No, I've never said that. April doesn't scream in the house. Um, we, you know, there's been arguments and there's disagreements, but I would never consider anything as being screaming in the house, uh, never raising a voice. Um, like it's like we have disagreements as a married couple. It happens. Um, we typically don't have those conversations in front of children. I can't honestly remember any time we've had a conversation that's a personal conversation with April and myself uh, in front of children. Like we, that's not anything that we do. Okay. I have no further questions. Okay. Anything else, Mr. Schaefer? Just to follow up. <clears throat> So what was April upset about? The fact that Leanne had come to the door? Is that what she was upset about? Uh, you know, I can't testify to what April was upset about that day. I, I really don't know, sir. It's not my, I can't say that. Okay, but she was upset about something. And if she didn't scream, at least she was upset and raised her voice. Is that true? Uh, if she was upset, I don't know what she was upset about. Okay. Uh, also, no that further question, Jordan. quite a few years ago. No further question, Jordan. Okay, thank you. Anything else, uh, Ms. Reed? Any additional uh, rebuttal or recall of any witnesses? No, Your Honor. Okay, so you rest? Yes. Okay, Mr. Schaefer. I would, would call Leanne uh, Hageman uh, for a rebuttal witness, Your Honor. Okay, Ms. Hageman, you are still under oath. Okay, go ahead, Mr. Schaefer. Yeah. Leanne, uh, what is the reason that you uh, brought this action? Because I'm worried about Gianna's emotional well-being and that I'm afraid that what's going on right now is going to be detrimental to her mental health for the rest of her life. And, and the way that she um, handles relationships with her own children, with their grandchildren, or with her grandchildren, and with every relationship she's going to have for the rest of her life. I think this is huge. And I, she's very timid right now. Um, she's not forthcoming with me about everything because I know because she's afraid of repercussions when she goes back there because she knows I'm going to stick up for her. Um, so there's a lot of things I really don't even know yet that have happened there. Um, and I'm very, very concerned that she, I have from day one, one of the main things I wanted her to learn was manners. And I'm afraid that I've made her a little bit too soft. And I, I feel like I've made her so soft that she doesn't have a backbone. And that with the additional things that are going on over there, She's been made to feel guilty many times. She's um, she's just, she's very timid. She doesn't have any voice there. And I believe that she doesn't feel that she can reach out to people and express her own um, desires or her, her own. She, she feels like she needs to do for everyone else. And I don't want that for her. I want, I, for, throughout her entire life, okay. she's going to have to advocate for herself. And I want her to learn to do that now. Okay. Uh, we had heard some testimony <clears throat> from JP that, he thought a week on week off uh, would be something that he would recommend. Has that subject matter come up with you before? Many times, many times for years now. Um, 
the uh, schedule that we're on right now was actually agreed to at April's request. It was um, when they first got together in an attempt to be accommodating and um, support that they were building a new family. Um, I It didn't matter to me being single by myself. It was, okay, that's fine. And JP and I, up until that point, had always worked wonderfully, beautifully together. Um, she never missed out on anything with either one of us. Um, so I thought, yeah, absolutely, we can do that. And so I actually have an email um, here okay, with me but stating- Anyway, but, but, but at that time, that was the suggestion of, of of JP and April that we have this schedule that you've been following. Is that correct? Yes, it was um, the same schedule that Baron was on. And um, at the time, April stated okay. that she um, didn't think that it was right for a mother to be without her child for five days at a time. But okay. since she's you been feel a... that, okay. Do you feel that the uh, the the time period of a, a full week without contact with you and Gianna would be detrimental under the stress she's going through at the present time? Oh, absolutely. And she doesn't feel um, comfortable reaching out to me while she's there. Um, and it's uh, she's told her dad and me both numerous times that she does not want that schedule. She did tell him at one point um, about two years ago that she'd be willing to try the week on week off schedule for one month, a trial period only in the summer. And that was two years ago. Since then, she has repeatedly told okay. us she does not want week on week off. Yeah. Let's let's go back just briefly to this uh, Easter event when uh Carol showed was at the uh, JP's place and you showed up. Mm -hmm. uh, did you do anything other than what uh, Ms. Masternack testified to? No, I just knew that they were in there eating family dinner. So I figured that Gianna wasn't watching for me in the driveway. So I walked up and knocked to, to get her. All right. Did you say anything to April? No, I didn't see April. I didn't even see her. Um, Carol and Tom had just came out and said hi. I hadn't seen them. They'd just gotten back from Florida. So they just said hi and came out and gave me a hug. Okay. Uh, we heard some testimony concerning uh, the Disney trip and that there was a phone call from Gianna to you. Do you remember that testimony? Yes. And uh, how long was that phone call? Um, well, I went back and checked. Um, it was it was longer than 30 seconds. It was about three minutes. Um, it was just under three minutes and it was definitely not 15 to, to 30 as he claimed. And he, we ended the okay. phone call because uh, they were in a store, I think a gift store. And I heard him in the background say, it's time to hang up. Okay. Um, <clears throat> there was some testimony about the difficulty of each of you having time for vacation. Would you be opposed to a of each party having a week or two a year with proper notice to the other party? Yes, absolutely. Um, Gianna doesn't want to have to be away from either parent for two weeks consecutively. Um, she she doesn't want to have to be away for that long. But yeah, there's something going on that, you know, vacation or whatnot planned. Absolutely. And I think something definitely does need to be in place. Because I'm not, I, I'm all for equal vacation time. And I'm all for, you know, I owe you this many days. But if they don't ever take their vacation days, then I'm not allowed to use any. And that's not fair to Gianna. I I feel like if, if we can't just be accommodating to each other and let each other go see her as needed, then there definitely needs to be a, a time period in place that we are legally allowed to. Okay. Uh, we've heard a lot of testimony, I guess, uh, especially from JP, that there is no communication other than text and minimal text between the two of you. Is that accurate? Yes. Do you think that co-parenting counseling would be of any assistance to the two of you to be able to communicate? Absolutely. I've actually suggested that and asked him to do that before. Okay. So you'll be willing for co-parenting uh, counseling to try to be able to communicate uh, with JP. Is that correct? I'd actually love to. Okay. I would, absolutely. Uh, Have you come up with any other uh, remedy to the concern that you have to the emotional and stress that uh, Jan is going through at the present time other than the change of custody? Um, I, th I think if I heard you right, I, I have concerns about, you know, when she wants to be in sports camps and things like that. And when, when she um, wants to do the same thing as the rest of her peers on her ba basketball and volleyball teams are doing, you know, optional things that she has the opportunity to go. And since they will not allow me to take her, um, it's really complete isolation on their part when, when they are with her or when they're, they, they do not want okay. me to have any kind of say in what happens at all in their time. I do think that, um, for her to be able to participate in these things and participate regularly, 
that it would be way more beneficial to have her with me so I can get her back and forth. And I fully support that. Um, I think that's a concern. Um, I, uh, I, I just, I, have, I want, have you been, have you been willing to uh, transport the child to these camps and extracurricular activities on JP's time? Yes, I have offered to him. And um, I've also told Gianna that if she has trouble getting there, that she can reach out to me as well. Um, JP is, has not allowed that. It's his time. I'm not allowed to see her. Okay, no further uh, questions, Gianna. Thank you. Ms. Reed, any uh, cross? Yes. Um, during this Disney trip, Gianna was allowed to text you through JP as well. Is that correct? Yes, JP's phone only. All the other kids in the car had a phone. And you sent JP a text message during that trip that said, just to be clear, I never consented to this or said it was okay. I'm only trying to be civil. Thank you for letting her text me through your phone. For the remainder of your vacation, I'd like to hear from her through her own phone that I pay for so that she can actually talk to me free without being monitored. Responses through your phone. You said you said something like that? Yes. And the reason that I um, said the uh, about um, that I never consented was previous, the text was kind of cherry picked previously. He um, had never, I'd asked him when they were coming home. I didn't even know when they were returning. Um, it, he didn't, he didn't communicate that with me until the morning that they came home. And that was an attempt to try to get him to tell me when they were coming home and at what time. So I knew when to expect her back. Um, and I also, um, I used the opportunity to be very honest. I used the opportunity um, for me to basically have the leverage of them wanting to take her on vacation. I fully intended to let her go the whole time, but I used the leverage at her therapist's recommendation to get him to sit down with an, with the therapist so that the two of us could work together to try to come up with a vacation schedule. And and very honestly, I wanted it just him and I, mom and dad, without the influence of April. Um, and I, I wanted to be able to facilitate that and get a working agreement going. Um, and like you said, it was two, two and a half hours of um, just ended up just being a battle and we got absolutely nowhere. So um, no, I never actually did consent to this trip to him. Gianna knew well in advance that you're going to be able to go. This is why I'm doing this. I'm trying to get, trying to get a schedule, you know, so you, you don't have to miss vacations with either family. And then, so that was, that's what, what I was referring to when I said I never consented to this trip. So you let Gianna know that she was going to be able to go, but you yes. were continuing to lead James to believe that it was going to be an issue. Um, James told me that he had planned a trip a year earlier, um, a year prior. He had told the administrators at the school and he told all of her basketball coaches um, months prior. I was only notified maybe four, four weeks prior and I was told I was not asked. And um, yeah, I, th I think that answers your question. Okay. And you had testified that this alternating days changing schedule was created because it, April requested it. Mm -hmm. Is this mm -hmm. schedule in your order in your judgment of divorce? No, it's not. And I also agree it's it's very inconvenient, but it's what Gianna's told me that she wants. She doesn't want to be over there for more than two or three days at a time. I have no further questions. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Hagman. Thank you. Any, any additional witnesses, Mr. Schaefer? No additional witnesses. You rest? I rest. Okay. That uh, anything else you have, Miss Reed? No, Your Honor. Okay, thank you. That looks like that concludes the uh, testimony in this matter. So we'll go to uh, any closing arguments, uh, Mr. Schaefer. Yes, Your Honor. Uh, this hearing went quicker than I anticipated, but I, I think it is clear uh, that whatever was going on or whatever is going on in uh, plaintiff father's home concerning this so-called system. Uh, it is flawed at best. It has at least a negative reaction from the child. Uh, and shame on the system being put into effect for a child that's a straight-A student, an athlete, uh, and then going through some sort of machinations where you've got to uh, pay for your room and your shower and your whatever it might be. Uh, and then come down with uh, consequences that puts an eviction on your door that you're going to be kicked out of your room. Uh, you've got to change your shower to the lesser shower. Uh, you're going to get your light bulbs taken away. Uh, whether this was serious or whether that was a flawed intent of what they are doing, uh, 
it had a devastating effect on the child. And I think the quid pro quo in that got that uh, scenario is that the child suffered academically. Uh, and one can say, oh, a B is not bad. Well, a B is bad for a straight A student. Um, you know, the fact that she has AP classes, straight A students take AP classes and they do well in them because they thrive on the challenge. Um, but the, the long and the short of it is this, is that the, the current situation, I think, is untenable for the child. I think uh, if, if you look back from the testimony of the father, it's always somebody else's fault what happened. It's his mother's fault uh, for uh, reporting to him only the bad behavior of Barron and not the bad behavior of other, other people. It's the fault of Leanne for coming up to the uh, Easter door and uh, delivering them things. Nothing was said. Uh, so it's it's her fault. It's always somebody else's fault. Um, it's the fault of Gianna that she's got to learn responsibilities, so we're going to do those things to her. Uh, it's, a, it's a lack of wisdom, I think, or a lack of insight as to the effect they're having on the child. Regardless of the cause of it, there's an effect on the child. And I would respectfully ask the court to give credence for whatever the recommendation or the, the, what the child wants, where the child wants to be, and the reasonable reason that she gave for that in the in-camera uh, hearing with yourself. Uh, she's not a stupid child. She is a 14-year-old who does well. I think she has a grasp of her parents' animosity to each other or inability to communicate, which is sad at best. And uh, perhaps some ordered co-parenting counseling uh, may be a challenge for the counselor, but I certainly would think for the benefit of the child that would make some sense uh, at this point in time. We have uh, a lot of demands that uh, the father has made as to when he's going someplace and he took it upon himself, contrary to the joint custody, physical custody order, of putting the child into counseling without the consent of the other parent. That's that's verboten. And um, if they can't agree, the requirement is go back to the court and get it ordered, not to sui sponte, uh, go ahead and enroll the child in counseling. That aside, I just think it is. Uh, support of everything is somebody else's problem. Uh, we can take care of it. Uh, the father has apparently ostracized himself from his own family. And the, the reason the grandmother, Miss Masterneck, has a relationship with Gianna is because of Leanne, that she is fostering that. And I think that is a positive for my client of the attitude that she has taken, that these grandparent uh, relationships for a 14 year old is important. It's important on both sides and should be fostered and should not be uh, you know, uh, it should not be kept away from their grand grandparents because of whatever problems the parents are having. I am respectfully asking that uh, the the child Gianna needs to be away from uh, her father and that environment that she is in over there uh, at this point in time. I think it is clear that Gianna loves both of her parents. There's no doubt about it. But it, it's, it's sad that she has to go through this stress. And I think the description of the stress from the grandmother is very telling. Uh, and to have the mother of one of the parents come down on her own child for not properly dealing with it is also telling. The grandmother is looking out for the best interest of the grandchild. I think her testimony is telling from the standpoint that the child needs a little protection at this point in time, and hopefully she's able to uh, patch up whatever is going on with her and the father, but she needs to be protected at this point in time emotionally and doesn't have to be uh, subject to this draconian uh, program or system that they have over there. And we would respectfully ask that there be a change in custody, a physical custody to my client with parenting time to uh, the father, and it can be expanded parenting time and more parenting time of one-on-one -on -one with dad is probably good without the other influences in that household. And my client has expressed that she's in favor of that and she's willing to participate in that. It will also allow uh, the mother to get the child to some of the other activities that the father is not able to do at the present time. My client has testified that her schedule is flexible and she's able to do that. She's willing to do that. She's expressed that she was willing to do that up to this point, but the communication is so bad that she was never 
advised that it needed to be done. Uh, one other thing, and I think this may be the only thing the two parties agreed on, is that there needs to be a, a clause whereby each of them will have uh, maybe a, a week or, or two separate uh, vacation times uh, with the child uh, with proper notice. And I would think uh, uh, 30 or 45 days notice uh, for each of them to the other one and to work out uh, the conflicts to allow that vacation time. And I would uh, request that also be part of the order. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Ms. Reed? First off, Your Honor, this is a request to change custody. And so the first determination that the court's required to make is to see where the established custodial environment is. And our position at the current time, the established custodial environment is with both parties. My client testified that Gianna comes to him for guidance. They have a relationship. He provides for her needs of daily living. And I believe that mom does as well. So as an established custodial environment with, is with both parties, and it's my opinion, and I do believe that the request would change that established custodial environment, um, mom has to prove by clear and convincing evidence that this is in the best interest of the child. And I don't think she comes close to doing that. Going to the motion that brought us into the court today, 99% of the allegations in that motion are not true. The one that is true is that the light bulbs were removed from her home. Is it unconventional? Is it a little unusual? Sure. It's essentially the same thing as saying there's a lights out period time. Lights out period time was for five hours on one evening. The rest of the allegations aren't true. It was alleged that Gianna was being denied the necessities of life. That wasn't true. Gianna testified that that wasn't true. It was alleged in this motion that she was deprived of certain foods and meals. That's not true. And she testified that wasn't true. It was alleged that she does not have the ability to maintain her reasonable hygiene. That's not true. She had access to other, to other bathrooms. She did not get to use the big bathroom because she didn't do her chores and clean it, which is a reasonable consequence for not doing minimal chores. It was alleged that she's being restricted from eating supplies. That's not true. She had, For one day, she had to ask permission to go get snacks, but she has ability to eat whatever she wants, and she does have a food preference of eating meat without bones. All of these allegations aren't true. What is true is that there was a system in place teaching responsibility, teaching budgeting, teaching money management, which resulted in an allowance for doing chores that are very minimal, normal chores that all children are usually required to do. Cleaning them up after themselves, doing the laundry, walking the dog, feeding the dog, maybe helping with a meal once or twice a night, cleaning up after that meal. These are not unusual chores. The consequences aren't unusual either. You don't do your chores, the electronics get taken away. You don't do your chores, you don't get to watch TV. She was not forced to do her homework in her room by the light of her iPad. The, the chores and the consequences that happened one time for one evening, less than 24 hours, are not putting this undue stress and she's not suffering in any way. Yes, she did testify she failed an exam, but she also testified that these two courses that she has B's in are harder. One of them is an AP course and those are harder and she feels she didn't get enough time to study maybe. And she has ability to study at both parents' house. These parents are having communication issues. They're having co-parenting issues. A change in custody is not appropriate, not in the best interest of this child. Co-parenting counseling is appropriate. If we're having issues selecting the counselor and communication regarding counseling, maybe we need to use a Talking Parents and our funny Wizard app to put it on the calendars where these appointments are so we can have coverage for a transportation issues to say, so-and-so is working on this day. Can you take her to this event? And so we know when these counseling appointments are. And if we can't agree on a counselor, I believe these two, maybe James needs to propose two counselors, Leanne needs to two, propose two counselors, and then they can pick one because it appears that Gianna's okay with changing a counselor and she's had minimal appointments. And I believe that JP would be agreeable to that and that they would use co-parenting counseling as a method to work through these issues. And I would agree that we do need to do something with the vacation period because having a fight regarding every vacation and putting all that stress, yes, John is going to feel that stress. But she wants to go on all these vacations and experience everything. And if mom and dad can't agree on that, sometimes that spills over to the child and that's not appropriate. So we would agree, yes, co-parenting counseling. Yes, let's modify something so everyone can take vacations. In our position that it would be best to alleviate some of the stress of going back and forth and this constant changing for a 14 year old week on week off might be a little more appropriate to change some of that constant dad's house mom's house dad's house mom's house so she has time to spend with everybody change the counselor to everyone that someone's agreeable on and that gian is agreeable on that's covered under jp and april's insurance but a change in custody and a drastic reduction of parenting time is not appropriate for what's going on so we're requesting that their motion be denied thank you mr schaefer anything else yeah, just uh, briefly, Your Honor, in response to the uh, custodial environment, I, I agree with the analysis. That's the requirement. But I am uh, suggesting to the court that the uh, 
the effect of what is going on. First of all, what has been set into place is a strange situation, is a strange uh, system. And whether or not it started out to be a teaching tool is regard uh, is not the issue. The fact is that they have implemented uh, eviction. They have implemented taking away lights. They have implemented changing showers. They have implemented uh, so many of these and not having access without of uh, the pantry without permission. Uh, and it has had a substantial effect on the child. And that is what is compelling. That is what is clear and convincing. There needs to be a change to that. Otherwise, this child is going to be uh, harmed for some period of time. Uh, my client acted on this expeditiously for that very reason that she wanted to nip this in the bud, that this not continue on. And apparently it helped in that regard that we heard from the father that uh, many of these things are not in effect anymore. So that is a positive that we've got at this point in time. But I think there needs to be adjustment uh, in the custody uh, with maybe some extended parenting time of the father until that can be brought back. It's a little disheartening. Uh, the testimony and the attitude of the father in this matter that that I don't think he recognizes the detriment to the child. And, and that is a little bit scary. If he doesn't recognize that he's not going to be able to uh, legitimately try to rectify the problem. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Well, in this matter, obviously, uh, we we're confronted with some difficult uh, issues. Court will state that as I heard the uh, testimony of the parties, I Clearly, the uh, relationship of the parties is abysmal, and I believe that that spills over uh, to Gianna. And I would say that based on what I'd heard, that both of the parties have engaged in some adversarial conduct that has caused stress to Gianna, based on where they've handled things, not handled things, or, again, use example, is uh, the petition in this matter. Uh, the petition does allege substantial amount of um, conduct in this matter, which was not borne out by the testimony in this case. Uh, I look at it and say, well, what happened is the plaintiff attempted to uh, teach children, not just Gianna, but Baron as well, to have responsibility. They're 14 years of age. And he said, hey, in a few more years, they're going to be out in college. They're going to have all these responsibilities. And they, uh, again, are going to be able to have to handle paying bills and paying taxes and all of these types of things. He devised and his wife devised a system. I'm obviously not gonna say it's a foolproof system in this matter. And uh, again, court would note that uh, at one point when the uh, the testimony was, I think of of April Hageman or, or uh, Mr. Hageman in this case, that again, I think it was April Hageman said, well, the kids didn't do too well for the first month or two when we implemented this. So we had to get a little stricter as to what we were going to do. And to, again, implement this particular system. And uh, so at that point, uh, there was, again, in the courts, not minimizing this, but there was one night where uh, Gianna and Baron had to use another bathroom because the bathroom that they would normally use, they weren't cleaning. Uh, and uh, also that, uh, again, what they did is they... Uh, took out the light bulbs from Gianna's room, which the court does recognize as quite bizarre in this particular matter. And uh, But again, that was for one night. And uh, again, it has not happened at any other time that, uh, again, uh, during this particular time, Gianna, she had total use of this other bathroom for the one night. She had total use of the rest of the house that had lights, et cetera. And the court finds, based upon the testimony, Although, as I said, this was odd uh, conduct. She was not denied any of the necessities of life. Uh, there was one time where it was argued, well, she was denied normal food. Well, Mr. Hagman testified that, hey, the night before we did it, I had made too much potato, uh, tomato, potato soup. And we had that again, the leftovers. And we all ate that. Uh, so that's not uh, denying her any necessities. Oftentimes, happened with kids when we, she... Gianna states she doesn't really like potato soup, apparently, but she had food like everybody else did. Uh, she wasn't picked on. She wasn't singled out. Neither of the kids were because the parents had the uh, potato soup as well. And unfortunately, that does happen in the family. 
some kids that do not like a particular uh, food choice, but you know they they eat it in this uh, particular matter. I wouldn't know it as I said because of the very uh, contentious relationship of the parties. It's clear that they need co-parent counseling. They uh, both have acknowledged that and acknowledged that their relationship is not good at this particular time. So the court is going to order co-parent counseling for the uh, parties. And if you know the counselor wants to pull in the children, that's fine as well for the child, Gianna. If he, she wants, to, if the counselor wants to pull in April as well, then the court would say that that's appropriate as well to get everybody on the same page. If we can, court will give the parties. Uh, 30 days to come up with the name of a counselor. They can each exchange those names. Uh, court would only order that, they, again, whoever they uh, recommend that that would be someone that would uh, be within uh, Mr. Hageman or April Hageman's uh, network uh, providers for those types of services. So you have to uh, make sure that that is covered in this uh, particular matter. And then the party sh should engage as quickly as possible after that to uh, get a counselor. Again, uh, if they're not involved, as I'm going to talk about the counseling for Gianna, if, if you cannot arrive at an agreement as to the counselor, then you bring the matter back to the court. I would state uh, in this matter uh, that uh, Mr. Hageman, when you pick the counselor out for uh, Gianna, Gianna, I'm not going to state that uh, effectively you violated the order. Maybe you violated the uh, a letter of the order because it states that you will engage in and uh, participate in uh, making those important decisions. I understand that you at that point, because of not having the relationship with uh, uh, the defendant in this matter, that you kind of defer that to the uh, Jackson Healing Center or clinic in this matter to have them contact her directly. I don't find any fault with that. That gives her an opportunity to talk to them, find out something as opposed to getting it secondhand and uh, either accepting or rejecting that when, again, there was no response or the response was, well, I'm not gonna agree to anything and I didn't agree to this, so I'm not gonna agree to these people, as obviously is not uh, uh, constructive and is not uh, in the interest of cooperation in this particular matter. But in the future, should that be necessary on any of these important decisions, again, when you get the court involved, then the court's the one that makes the decision. And, Quite frankly, the court doesn't want to make those decisions. It wants the two of you to make those decisions. But when you can't and you abdicate that to the court, the court's going to make those decisions. And the two of you are going to have to then bring the matter back to the court and not engage in any unilateral uh, action on your own part. Um, court will note and I'll address the issue of the counseling for Gianna. Again, she'd only been to a few sessions. She said she's not opposed to chain the counselor. So I'll leave it up again to the parties to have 30 days to, uh, again, exchange names of counselors that uh, Gianna could go to that would be, uh, again, in in um, in network of uh, his his or April's insurance to cover that. If they can't agree, bring it back to the court and the court will decide. Also, the court notes that the parties have all agreed as well in, in principle that the parties need to have something in place as it relates to vacation schedule. Because again, with working their two two three schedule, it's not conducive to that. We have to then you know, agree upon times, and that's led to some angst in this matter as well, and other contention. So the court, based upon that, and they, really what the parties agreed to, is that they should have some sort of vacation time. You know, the court's going to put in place that the parties would each be entitled to two weeks of vacation time in a given year. It would not have that be a uh, consecutive, but uh, in this matter, they would do it at separate times, and they would do it upon 60 days notice to the other party. So you each have a right to two weeks notice to the other party, and uh, what happens, the court will state, if, for instance, Mr. Hageman gives notice to Ms. Hageman, okay, I want to take, for instance, the first week in, uh, in uh, July, if he provides notice to her prior to her providing notice that she also wanted to take that time, then he has the priority for that. So again, I'm saying it has to be at least 60 days notice, but it can be longer than that. You could come out in January 1 and say, okay, I want to take these particular weeks. And you would get those weeks if the other party had not, uh, again, not reserved and notified that they wanted those weeks as well. And then you would have to work that out. 
court will note that uh, credibility in these cases is always an issue. And uh, always, oftentimes that uh, it will be stated that one witness is lying or they're uh, embellishing or they're giving uh, self-serving testimony. However, the courts often found that inconsistencies in testimony does not mean that an individual has lied. However, conflicting testimony can occur because of a witness's background, perception, bias, understanding, misunderstanding, or a mistake. Or again, as I say, there are other reasons that they want to paint themselves in the best light possible. So they're kind of embellishing or again, giving more self-serving testimonies. The court has to look at other testimony and see, again, can that testimony, conflicting testimony be reconciled? And as a result, the court has noted in this matter, there has been conflicting testimony, but some of it more substantial and direct, some of it more by inference and that. So the court would, again, look at what the other witnesses and other testimony to kind of reconcile what testimony is credible in this particular case. As the attorneys had stated and are aware of, again, uh, the first job of the court in any custody case is to determine whether an established custodial environment exists. An established custodial environment exists when the parties and the parents and the children both look, when the child looks to a parent for guidance, discipline, necessities of life, and parental comfort. The court will note that a established custodial environment can exist in the home of both of the parents. If the child has an established custodial environment with both parties, uh, neither party's custodial environment may be disrupted absent clear and convincing evidence that the change would be in the best interest of the child. The legislature has enacted, enacted a clear and convincing burden of proof to minimize the prospect of unwarranted or disruptive change in custody and to erect a barrier against removing the child from an established custodial environment. In this particular case, what the court looks at to determine then, as stated, is who does the child look to for guidance, discipline, necessity of life, and parental comfort? In this particular matter, there's no dispute, and we'll get into those factors when we look at the best interest of the child test as delineated under the Child Custody Act being MCL 722.23. But when we look at those factors, guidance, discipline, necessity of life, and parental comfort, um, obviously, both of the parties have provided necessities of life to the to Gianna when she's in their particular care. Uh, it does, both of the parties have testified that, uh, again, Gianna will come to them, will talk to them. Uh, the testimony had shown that, uh, I think of uh, both of the parties, that uh, Gianna, when she has issues, uh, she'll come to them and talk to them. Uh, I think it sticks, sticks in my mind that uh, Mr. Hagelin has stated that, yeah, Gianna will talk to him daily about issues concerning her friends, uh, issues she might be having, et cetera. And the court notes that uh, Ms. Hagman had also testified like that as well, that uh, that uh, Gianna comes to her and talks to her in this, uh, when she has issues as well. Court will note, another one I had noted is there was some issue concerning the funeral where Gianna went to uh, Mr. Hagman and talked to him about that where she was upset. The court notes that each of the parties had talked about their means of discipline, that they do it through taking away, again, electronics, which apparently with teenagers is the only thing that works at the at this particular point, uh, notwithstanding all of the other particular issues, but that they are pretty much engaged in, okay, we're going to take away our phone or electronics as a form of discipline. But again, it, neither of the parties testified to any substantial amount of discipline issues or that they had to discipline it to any extent. So. Again, that's minimal. Uh, when the court looks at those particular, um, I guess, requirements for uh, the established custodial environment, the court is left with a firm conviction that in this particular case, that uh, Gianni has a, an established custodial environment with both parties. That's important because, again, and then it, we have to, to uh, change the established custodial environment, we have to the defendant in this case would have to establish by clear and convincing evidence. Clear and convincing evidence is evidence which produces in the mind of the trier fact a firm belief or conviction 
as to the truth of the allegation sought to be established. Evidence so clear, direct, and weighty and convincing as to enable the court to come to a clear conviction without hesitancy of the truth of the precise facts and issue. As I stated, and the testimony has shown that, again, many of the allegations uh, contained in the petition have not been borne out in the testimony. Uh, court will find that uh, Jenny hasn't been denied necessity of life when she wasn't able to use the bathroom, the one particular bathroom, because she hadn't cleaned it. She was able to use the other one. When she had the lights removed for one night in her bedroom, she had access to all other parts of the house where she could do that. She wasn't denied or, um, again, uh, restricted in any way from food because the whole family had the same thing at that uh, particular time. And uh, interestingly, too, is that Baron, who also was subject to the uh, same, uh, I guess you'd say, system in this matter, uh, had his, uh, had to not use the bathroom as well. I, I do note that I'm struck by when April uh, had been testified that uh, about going into Gianna's bedroom, testified that she would not go into there because of the condition of the uh, the particular bedroom. So uh, when I look at that, I'm thinking, okay, clearly this uh, system that was put into place didn't have really its desired effect in this matter because clearly uh, the keeping of the bedrooms clean didn't have much of an impact because, again, it was such that uh, April Hagelin wouldn't go in there because of the condition of the room. Uh, court would note as well that uh, whether it's from this case or whether it's from, again, the realization that what Mr. Hagelin attempted uh, didn't work, that he has, in fact, uh, discontinued <coughs> that uh, system and that uh, uh, allowance or the payment of bills or whatever you want to call it system, uh, that he, in fact, discontinued that. He said, look, that there was only that one night that that happened. And uh, again, they didn't uh, didn't have the desired effect. So they, they haven't done anything in that regard since then. That again, the kids still have uh, chores to do. They still have things that they have to do as far as keeping the room clean, which obviously does not apparently work. But they have to do some laundry. They have to just put the dishes in the dishwasher. They have to vacuum. They have to feed the dogs, you know, et cetera, in this matter. But now they still have that uh, that uh, those requirements, but they're not being paid any allowance because they've discontinued that. And so, again, regardless of why it was, apparently it's had the desired effect, and that's that's been eliminated in this uh, particular case. Uh, <clears throat> Court then now will go through the best interest of the child test. The court would note that, uh, again, as I go through these factors, uh, the court does not weigh them as uh, baseball box scores. So, and in fact, the Court of Appeals and the cases have stated that the court can give disproportionate weight to any particular factor and uh, is not required, but not required to weigh each fact equally and based upon the facts and circumstances of the case, can weigh those differently. Court will note first that, uh, again, the parties pursuant to the order of September 27, 2017, had uh, joint legal and joint physical and parenting time on a 50-50 basis. And uh, that, uh, again, that's that's continued since that time. Uh, in 2017, I would note that the, that order came about as a result of consent, both parties consenting to that at that uh, particular time. It's been a uh, testimony. Well, I'll get into this. First, the factors, the love, affection, other emotional ties existing between the parties involved and the child. There's been testimony by, again, both of the parties as to the love, affection exhibited between each of them and Gianna. There's been testimony by uh, the other parties, uh, April and Miss Masternak, about the uh, love, affection that existed between uh, Gianna and her parents. Uh, Miss Masternak testified that. Uh, that uh, Gianna and her son, Mr. Hagman, had an excellent relationship for many times. That in fact, she had testified that the uh, that uh, she was certain that uh, both of the parties love Gianna and that she loves both of them. The other testimony clearly is that uh, again that uh, each of them have those emotional ties. Court will find that there is no uh, that this factor is equal as to both parties. 
Next factor is the capacity and disposition of the parties involved to give the child love, affection, guidance, and continuation in the education raising the child in a particular religion. In this case, as I stated, capacity and disposition are two different things. Each of the parties had the capacity. It's a matter of whether they have the disposition to extend that to uh, Gianna. It does appear that they have that particular disposition, that they have provided her with love, affection, and guidance, as I've previously uh, testified or stated in this uh, particular matter. Uh, both of the parties had also testified about uh, providing and continuing to assist uh, Gianna in schooling, helping with homework, et cetera. And uh, testimony has been brief as it relates to religious upbringing. Mr. Hagman testified, yeah, a couple of years ago that they had engaged in some sort of uh, going to church, but the, for some reason that didn't work out. Ms. Hagman stated just quite recently, just a matter of months, that Gianna expressed a desire to go to some youth uh I guess you'd say a program with the church and she's been not doing that, but that's been quite recent. Uh, and uh, so that the court does not find that this factor weighs in favor of either party, but that both parties are equal. Next matter is the capacity and disposition of the parties involved to provide the child with food, clothing, medical care, and other remedial care recognized in lieu of medical care and other material needs. Clearly both of the parties have provided uh, Gianna with those, uh, again, those material needs when she is with them. There's been no, uh, again, allegation that she hasn't been provided that other than as it related to this um, chore system, if you would. And uh, that, again, was short-lived as well. Uh, court would note that uh, Mr. Hageman and his current wife do provide the medical uh, insurance for Gianna. He testified that he has been responsible for providing the uh, doctor medical care and that uh, Miss Hageman, I should say the defendant, that she is responsible for providing the dental care. So obviously they're both doing that and providing that to Gianna. When I look at this, the court will find that this factor does weigh equally as to both parties. Next factor is the length of time the child has lived in a satisfactory environment and the desirability of maintaining continuity. Uh, the court would note that uh, in this uh, particular case that uh, the defendant had testified that uh, she is in the current home where she was at for approximately eight years, that she owns the house, that uh, uh, she obviously doesn't have any uh, intention of uh, moving or uh, there's no desirability of the change at this particular point. Uh, the plaintiff had testified, I believe, that he'd been in the current home for about five years and uh, that there was obviously no intent to change that at the uh, current time. Uh, the court, based upon, again, that there's been very minimal uh, testimony as to Again, the satisfactory uh, ness of that uh, particular environment, but it does appear that both of those environments are satisfactory for Gianna. So the court will weigh this factor equal as to both parties. Next factor is the primacy of the family unit of the existing or proposed custodial homes. Uh, the defendant has not testified that there any change in her home. She simply resides at that home with. Uh, Gianna, that in the uh, plaintiff's home, he resides with his wife, April, and that, in fact, uh, and her son, Baron, uh, there's no testimony that, again, about any proposed changes to that home, that he, again, both of the parties own their own homes, that he became he married uh, April back on uh, December 31st, 2017, and they've been together since that time. There's been no issues or no, uh, it's not even been raised that there's any uh, contention between the those between the plaintiff and April in this matter. The court will find that this factor does weigh equally as to both parties. Next factor is the moral fitness of the parties. There's really been no testimony about either of the parties being immoral. Uh, they had both testified back when they were about 21 that they had a uh, EWI, uh, that that's 20 some years ago. The court obviously has not seen anything since that time to not hold that against either of the parties and find that the parties are equal as to that particular factor. 
Next factor is the mental and physical health of the parties. There's been no issues raised about e either the party's mental or physical health. There's been no testimony from any doctors or uh, mental health care providers about either party being deficient in this uh, particular matter. So the court will not weigh that factor in favor of either party, but find that it is in fact equal. Next factor is the homeschool and community record of the child. The court will note that uh, we've already talked about the home record as it relates to many things in this uh, particular matter. The court uh, uh, will note that uh, the school record in this matter uh, was originally at least somewhat troubling to the court when it was uh, reviewing and again, outlining, if you would, the cases. I went through all of the pleadings in preparation for this hearing and uh, the court looked at uh, that, and I note that there was the court was aware that uh, uh, Gianna did have some slipping in her particular grades. That she had been a straight A student prior to this year. That uh, she had uh, not had any problems with schooling. That uh, in fact, the court will note that. Uh, Obviously, it's been alleged that the uh, reason for the slippage is the uh, things that have occurred in the plaintiff's home as a result of this chore or reward system that he implemented. But again, as I said, that was minimal. It happened one day, and uh, that, in fact, it had that occurred since that uh, particular time. I'm struck. That's why I asked Gianna when I was asking her about the classes at this point. She acknowledged that biology and the English 9, which is an AP class, were harder. She also acknowledged that uh, failing this English exam that occurred in October, that was not, uh, again, that was not at the time when uh, this one night when uh, the light bulbs were removed or they had to use a different bathroom, that was at a different time. And she acknowledged that she believed, well, she must not have studied enough uh, for that uh, particular test. So. The court can't ascribe that uh, drop in grades to the uh, plaintiff in this uh, particular matter because each of the parties had an opportunity because of the 223 schedule to work with her in homework, to assist her, et cetera. And uh, I think by her own words and her own testimony, she uh, would belie that, in fact, it was a result of this uh, um, chore system that was put into place, but it had to do with, again, the uh, difficulty of the classes and having not studied in this particular matter. As no, she's in uh, she's in uh, sports. She does volleyball. She does basketball. She had engaged in summer camp. Uh, that uh, there was testimony by the defendant that the plaintiff had missed some of the strength and training in the summer. I would note that that training has been something that uh, again is not required that he had testified that again sometimes his system excuse me his schedule and april schedule was not conducive to it they have reached out to other parents have provided that way and yes they've moved, missed some practices but there's been no testimony that again the few practices that have been missed had any detrimental effect on her performance in sports and unfortunately that happens it happens with all sorts of parents in trying to juggle work, they're trying to juggle all sorts of other things, and maybe multiple kids. And uh, you can't, sometimes, unfortunately, can't do everything. The court does not ascribe anything to the plaintiff as a result of those few practices that were missed. And nor has that been demonstrated in any way that it impacted her performance in sports. And we've not had anybody testify to that. So uh, the court would also note that there was testimony that. Uh, that Gianna has recently started looking into uh, school student government and getting involved in that. And it's possible that maybe she has far too many activities and the, part, the parties need to, uh, again, rein that in and cut it back if, again, that's impairing her and having an impact upon her studies. And sometimes that's necessary as well. The court does not find that this factor weighs in favor of either of the parties. Next factor is the reasonable preference of the child. The court did have opportunity to speak to Gianna, and uh, she was very open. She was very straightforward, 
And the court uh, did note that she expressed a preference that the court's taken into consideration. Next factor is the willingness and ability of each of the parents to facilitate and encourage a close and continued parent-child relationship between the parties and the other parent and the child. Uh, in this particular matter, uh, again, court does believe that uh, the defendant has been more willing to facilitate a parent-child relationship. She's been more flexible. But again, the uh, court notes that that has not been substantial, uh, that in fact, uh, uh, Gianna has access to both of the parents through phones, uh, that even when the plaintiff took uh, the phone that uh, the defendant had provided, he provided her with a phone that she could use. She had access to the testimony about when she called her mother. Uh, her mother had stayed away. Well, she didn't talk to me very long. Uh, originally, the well, it was 30 seconds. Then, on, again, on uh, rebuttal, well, it was for a few minutes. Uh, but, again, the court would note that that was at a time when Gianna was engaged in an activity at a theme park in Florida with uh, the plaintiff and his family. So, uh, again, I don't put a lot of credence in that point, but I do note in looking at the uh, testimony as a whole, it does appear that the uh, defendant has been slightly more, uh, again, willing to uh, facilitate a change in schedule in doing that. So that does give her a slight advantage as it relates to this particular factor. Next factor is uh, domestic violence. There's been no testimony about domestic violence in any regard uh, in the home of uh, either of the parties. So the court will not consider that factor. Any other factor the court considers to be relevant in particular child custody dispute. I do note that, uh, that the court does consider her the testimony about uh, Gianna's uh, relationship with Baron in the uh, plaintiff's home that in fact, uh, that they had a good relationship. The times that they've argued and disputed like any siblings would in this uh, matter, but the court is taking that into consideration in this uh, particular case. Uh, but again, it's it's a slight consideration. Uh, court does note there's been substantial uh, testimony about the stress that Gianna has experienced. I think that that stress based on what I heard is again caused in large part by the uh, conduct of both of the parties in what they've done in this particular case. Uh, and uh, as, as a result, the court is taking that into consideration. Court notes as well that there was some testimony from Ms. Masternak about uh, April and this blow up that apparently occurred on Easter. It's not been testimony that's occurred regularly or anything of that. I don't know really what that was about. Uh, but it, the court does believe that something happened. The court's taking that into consideration as well. I didn't mention because that I do a note that both of the parties have uh, kind of comparable income in this matter. I should have addressed that under the material needs, but I just haven't been noted in my, in my notes, and I uh, again highlighted that. So that uh, didn't favor either of the party. They were all both able to provide the necessities of life. When the court looks at that and looks at those particular factors, the court then has to look at it, as I stated, does that, the testimony and evidence established by clear and convincing evidence, that it would be in the best interest of GI to change custody? Again, was there evidence so clear, direct, weighty, and convincing as to allow the court to come to a clear conviction without hesitancy? When the court weighs this evidence, Against that, the court in this matter is firmly convinced that, again, the evidence does not approach clear and convincing evidence. As a result, there is not a basis to change custody in this matter. The court will, in fact, continue the joint custody of the honor and the care of both of the parents. Uh, again, the plaintiff has testified that he liked the uh, uh, parenting time to be on an alternating weekly basis. And uh, quite, quite frankly, when I looked at this, I felt that uh, perhaps the a lot of the issues that the parties were having were occurred as a result of so many uh, 
printing time exchanges, that that in fact contributed to the conflicts between the parties that involved Gianna. Uh, the court does believe that those conflicts are exacerbated by the fact that there are so many, uh, again, changes in, in a given week period, and that that only leads to uh, more stress uh, in this particular matter with her. But when I listened to the testimony of the defendant, uh, the court, she states that it appears that uh, some sort of a uh, an alternating week would not work, that Gianna would not like that because of the fact of uh, not getting to see each of the parents uh, um, for an extended period of time. And uh, so when I look at that and I look at the factors under uh, MCL 722.27a, I have to weigh those particular factors. Weighing those factors as it relates to parenting time, uh, is are there any special circumstances or needs of the child? In this case, there's been no testimony about special circumstances or needs. Child is 14, so the other factor, factor two, is not applicable. Next factor, likelihood of abuse or neglect of a child during parenting time. The court cannot find that to uh, exist. Next, likelihood of abuse of a parent during the exercise of parenting time. Court notes that obviously there's conflict between the parties, but doesn't believe that it arises to near the level of abuse. Next, the impact of or burdensome impact of travel. Court doesn't see that to be a factor in this matter. Next is whether parents reasonably expected to exercise court ordered parenting time. Uh, parties have both done that consistent with the order of uh, September of 2019 in this matter. Next factor is whether a party has frequently failed to exercise parenting time, which they have not. Uh, next is that threatened or actual detention of the child. There's been no threatened or actual detention of the child, and then any other relevant factors. Again, the relevant factors I would think is that I think the constant change in a given week does create some difficulties in this particular matter. So uh, what the court is going to do is the court is going to change the parenting time schedule from a 223 schedule to a 442 schedule. That lengthens the time. And in fact, hopefully they would not have as many changes, they would only have, again, approximately two changes every two weeks rather than four every week. Uh, and it would still keep it rotating so the parties could have different weekends, different weeks, et cetera. And the court will have that commence on uh, Wednesday, January 3rd, 2024 at five o'clock p.m. The court will allow the current schedule to continue and whatever parent has uh, the child on January 2nd, the other party would then commence their four days on January 3rd, and then we would go to the alternating four day, then the alternating two day. Otherwise, if we didn't do a four four two, there'd be each one party would always have one weekend, one party would always have the time during the week, which would obviously not be conducive to either party nor to Gianna in uh, this particular matter. With that, I think that uh, addresses all of the uh, matters that the court has to address for this particular case. I'll ask uh, Mr. Schaefer, is there anything else that you believe that the court has failed to address or needs to address before we conclude? I, I guess I need a little further clarification on your 442, Your Honor. You say it begins on January 3rd, a Wednesday. So the Wednesday person has Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday? Correct. So, so they're gonna you're gonna break up the weekends for the parties. Yes. Any okay, any, so any way we do it, it's gonna break up the weekends with two even on two two four. I mean, a two two three or anything of that nature. That's gonna break up those particular times depending upon when the schedule happens. So, uh, I don't see any other way to do it. And uh, four four two would simply keep it such that we don't have to have as many exchanges. Okay, just just so it's clarified. So it's. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday until what time on Saturday? Five o'clock p.m. So it begins on five and ends on five, and the next one will have uh, Saturday at five, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Tuesday to five. Yep, uh, to five. Okay. Yep. And then after that, then, we do the two days. So it'd be Tuesday, Wednesday through Thursday. We switch on Thursday. At five o'clock p.m., and then at that point, then whoever that parent would would have 
again, the Thursday, Friday, Saturday exchange on Sunday. So we would get, they would get an entire weekend and that would happen on an actual rotation after there, after that. Okay. Thank you for the clarification. Okay, anything else, Mr. Schaefer? Uh, no. Ms. Reed, is there anything else you believe the court needs to address or has failed to address before we conclude? At the motion hearing, the court reserved on our request for attorney's fees. Okay. In this matter, I'm not going to award any attorney fees in this matter. Uh, each party can be responsible for their own attorney fees in this particular case. Who prepares the order, Your Honor? Mr. Schaefer, at your motion, I'll ask that you would prepare the order and you can submit that under a seven-day notice of entry. Okay. Thank you. Thank you all. And uh, hopefully, uh, with what we put in place, we can get this matter behind the parties and uh, allow them to uh, do what's in uh, Gianna's best interest. So I, I wish you the best and uh, you're free to go. Have a good day.